Welcome to this how-to series. Random vibration analysis enables you to determine the response of structures to vibration loads that are random in nature. The randomness is characteristic of the excitation or input. Typical applications include loads experienced by an aircraft in flight, or delivery trucks running on a rough road, and wave loads on an offshore structure. In this video, we will show you characteristics and workflow of random vibration analysis. Are you ready? Let's go. The vibration generated in vehicles due to motor vibration and rough road conditions are a combination of many frequencies and has a certain random nature. In random vibration analysis, excitation such as displacement, velocity, or acceleration are not deterministic. Such input excitations are statistical in nature. Consider a car traveling on a road, for example. The time history of the road is unique every time the car runs over the same stretch of road. Hence, it is not possible to predict precisely the response of a car component at a point in its time history. Instead, what we need is a statistical or probabilistic approach to determining the response of the system. This gives us a better method for evaluating our engineering parts under random excitations. The frequency content of the time history or spectrum is captured along with the statistics and used as the load in the random vibration analysis. This spectrum is called power spectrum density or PSD. This is also why random vibration analysis is sometimes referred to as PSD analysis. Random vibration analysis uses a mode superposition method that requires input from linear natural frequency analysis or modal analysis and power spectral density curves, which are representations of vibration frequencies and energy in a statistical form. The analysis determines the root mean square response of the displacements and stresses resulting from constant random vibration over time. What we need is a method to describe and quantify the excitation. If the amplitude is constantly changing, how can a random excitation be evaluated? It is helpful to observe that at a given frequency, the amplitude of the excitation does not constantly change. Its average value tends to remain constant. Such load histories can be characterized statistically in terms of a power spectrum density plot. PSD spectra plots are generally supplied to the analyst. Many random processes follow a Gaussian distribution, also referred to as normal distribution. The excitation is assumed to follow a Gaussian distribution. The one sigma value represents a current 68.3% of the time, while three sigma values represent a current 99.7% of the time. In a random vibration analysis, since the input excitations are statistical in nature, so also are the output responses such as displacement and stress. In ANSYS, the spectral density response is typically called a response PSD or RPSD. Response PSD is like an input PSD, but it represents the output measured at a given location. The plot provides information as to where the average power is distributed as a function of frequency. The square root of the area under the response PSD is the so-called root mean square or RMS value. It is a one sigma or one standard deviation value in a statistical term. Let's see how we can perform random vibration analysis in ANSYS Mechanical. The objective of this example is to perform a dynamic analysis of a printed circuit board, or PCB, subjected to random vibration. 
The scenario under consideration involves multiple PCBs packaged in a box and being transported in the back of a truck. The PCBs are assumed to be fixed at two holes located at extreme corners of each board. Considering the input PSB representing the vibrations caused by the road conditions, we will calculate the probability that the out-of-plane deformation of each board will not exceed three millimeters and hit the adjacent boards in the box. We begin by opening a workbench project file. Since this is mode superposition analysis, the workflow includes modal and random vibration systems. Notice the link between modal solution and random vibration setup. We begin by opening mechanical by double clicking on modal analysis model cell. Once in mechanical, note the material assignments to the board and its components. Since this is a small deflection linear analysis, the element order is set to linear under mesh controls. Body sizing and sweep method are strategically scoped to the main board for efficiency. Before running the modal analysis, we need to insert fixed supports on the two holes located at opposite ends of the board. In the details window of the modal analysis settings, we request 20 modes of vibration and we take the default settings for the frequency range. From here, we are ready to solve the modal part. Once completed, note from the modal results that the natural frequencies of the PCB range from 90 to 2200 Hz for the first 20 modes. Highlighting the random vibration branch, we now insert a PSDG acceleration. We scope this to all supports and set the direction to Z axis since we are interested to see the probability of a component deforming in Z direction and hitting a neighboring PCB board. G acceleration data is defined at 0.1 for 10 Hertz, 0.5 for 100 to 1000 Hertz, and 0.2 for 2000 Hertz. The random vibration analysis is now ready to solve. Once completed, we scope the direction deformation in Z direction to the tallest component on the PCB board. We set the scale factor to one sigma we then duplicate this result and set the scale factor to three sigma for comparison later. We right mouse click on the solution branch and insert a response PSD tool. Scope the response PSD to, the, to a vertex on the PCB board and extract the Z component of displacement. Next, evaluate the results. By examining the one sigma directional deformation result, one can conclude that there is about a 68.3% probability that the deformation of the PCB component will be below 0.98 millimeters. Whereas for a three sigma directional deformation result, there is a 99.7% probability that the same deformation will be below 2.96 millimeters. Notice that there is no deformation shape since these results are statistical in nature. The response PSD provides information as to where the average power is distributed as a function of frequency. 
The peak G acceleration response occurs at the resonant frequencies on the assembly. This completes the demo. Let's summarize. Response vibration is a linear analysis. This analysis is based on the mode superposition method. Hence, a modal analysis that extracts the natural frequencies and mode shapes is a prerequisite. The excitation is applied in the form of power spectral density, or PSD, statistical input. The base excitation could be an acceleration PSD, either in acceleration squared units or in G squared units, a velocity PSD or a displacement PSD. In a random vibration analysis, since the input excitation are statistical in nature, so also are the output responses, such as displacement, stresses, and so on. I hope you find this video informative. Please share the video, post your comments, and subscribe to this channel to stay updated. Don't forget to visit courses.ansys.com to discover more useful courses.